Welcome to our reflection for Good Friday. We're going to take the next short while to read through some of the Bible account of Jesus' journey towards the cross and his crucifixion as told in the Gospel of John. We're going to read some other readings and reflections together, some poems, and there will be some images for you to look at as well. You might want to have your Bible open to read along, though the words will appear on the slideshow as well. It may be that you want to pause at various points to think further yourself or perhaps look back at some of the images and take some time afterwards to respond in your own way. We begin with a prayer, an opening prayer, a reflection called It Was On A Friday. It was on a Friday that they ended it all. Of course, they didn't do it one by one. They weren't brave enough. All the stones at the one time or no stones thrown at all. They did it in crowds, in crowds where you can feel safe and lose yourself and shout things you would never shout on your own and do things you would never do if you felt the camera was watching you. It was a crowd in the church that did it and a crowd in the civil service that did it, and a crowd in the street that did it, and a crowd on the hill that did it. And he said nothing. He took the insults, the bruises, the spit on the face, the whips on the back, the curses in the ears. He took the sight of his friends turning away, running away, and he said nothing. He let them do their worst until their worst was done, as on Friday they ended it all and would have finished themselves had he not cried, Father, forgive them. and began the revolution. Well, we read now from John chapter 18, starting at verse 28. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas, to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace, because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfil what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. 
if it were my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for the charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realise I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the, king, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Well, we're going to hear a song next. It's time to reflect on what we've heard so far. Jesus dies that we 
traditional to read together the words of Psalm 22 either on Monday Thursday or Good Friday and we're going to do that now if you would like to join in I will read through the whole thing but you might like to join in with the words in bold which is every other verse my God my God why have you forsaken me why are you so far from saving me so far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. 
In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted within me. My mouth is dry as dust and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions, Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honour him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Well, I wonder what this day, Good Friday, means to you. It's a paradox of a name, isn't it? We consider the events, but we understand why it is good. Well, the next few slides we're going to read through a reflection. But there's also some really interesting images for you to look at. So we will pause as we read and perhaps take the opportunity to consider what God might be saying to us this Good Friday. Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Thomas doubted Jesus. Jesus died for them. Pilate rejected Jesus. Herod taunted Jesus. Caiaphas framed Jesus. Jesus died for them.
the soldiers crucified Jesus. The disciples deserted Jesus. The people laughed at Jesus. Jesus died for them. Mary wept for Jesus. The women anointed Jesus. Joseph buried Jesus. Jesus rose for them. We have doubted Jesus. We have denied Jesus. We rejected Jesus. But Jesus died for us. We continue with our reading. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened it to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. 
Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened, that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. Soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he had feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus bought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 35 kilograms. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in, in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, They laid Jesus there. Well, I wonder what Good Friday means to you this year as we look back since last Easter on all the events that we've seen in the world, in our nation, in our own 
communities and our own families, amongst our friends and our neighbours. Where have we seen signs of hope? Where have we wept? Where have we looked for miracles? Well, our next poem is about looking for miracles. And we know that Jesus' death changes everything. It is earth shattering. Changes the whole of history, the whole of humanity. But God's Spirit often works in our lives in much smaller ways because of what Jesus has done for us. And this poem picks up on some of the small miracles that we have needed and that we continue to need as we reflect on what Jesus' death has bought for us and what his new life will offer us. Miracles. It's not always the big miracles, the thunderous, pulsating, ground-shaking ones, but those that are small, delicate, unheralded, like when the sobs finally stop, or when the anxiety begins to fade, or when the blackbird decides that there is enough light to begin praising the new day. It's when your broken heart eventually accepts that it can begin to heal, or when the delicate stem pushes through the dirt to discover that air and light are real. It may just be the uh, to open your eyes after a night at the end of your rope to find that your lungs are way ahead of you and never stopped breathing in hope. It's not the big miracles, the ones that shout and shine. It's the small miracles that are sent to show us the loving hand of the divine. Well, as we wait to see that big miracle, as we remember that big miracle again, and we wait to see what small miracles God might show us in the coming days. Let's go with a blessing. The Song of the Winding Sheet. We never would have wished it to come to this. Yet we call these moments holy as we hold you. Holy the tending, holy the winding, holy the leaving as in the living. Holy the silence, holy the stillness, holy the turning and returning to earth. Blessed is the one who came in the name. Blessed is the one who laid himself down. Blessed is the one emptied for us. Blessed is the one wearing the shroud. Holy the waiting, holy the grieving, holy the shadows and gathering night. Holy the darkness, holy the hours, holy the hope turning toward light. Well, may you know God's blessing and God's hope 
in these coming few days and I look forward to being able to celebrate that hope anew again on Easter Sunday.